All right, I'm going to take a look at another micro system today. This is the second in a three part series. The first one we looked at a Iowa system from 1979 or thereabouts. This one is from 2003. It's also from Iowa. So we're able to see the difference between how they progressed over that time, but also how much more useful one of these is to somebody nowadays compared to that 1979 model, because that just had a radio and a cassette on it. This has, well, it plays a lot of formats. We'll get it out of here and have a good look at it. But I got this from Japan because it's a model that wasn't available here in the UK. There's plenty of micro systems that were, and it would be a lot cheaper and easier to show one of those. This one, though, just appealed to me for a couple of reasons, which we'll see as we go along. Although it was advertised as having a fault, they said it had swallowed the mini disc which to me just sounds like it needs a belt on the loading mechanism. The question is though, whether I can get to that belt to replace it. Other than that, everything else about it looked all right from the pictures. It seemed to be playing a CD, a tape, um, a mini disc. I'm giving away some of what it does now. So let's get into it. Let's have a look and see if uh, it does work and if I can fix that mini disc part of the device. Right, okay, let's get on with it. So what we've got here are the speakers, the main unit, Looks like we've got an antenna in there, perhaps something else as well. And I know we've got two remote controls with this, identical remotes. I don't know why they had two, but I'm glad that they're included because this will be one of those units, I'm quite sure, where not all the buttons on the remote are mirrored on the device itself to keep it looking nice and slick. And therefore, to access some of the features, you'll have to have the remote control. Always something to bear in mind if you're getting hold of a micro system second hand. Does it have the remote? Because more often than not, you'll find things like the different sound modes, some of the recording options. You'll need the buttons on the remote to access those. Now this one, I imported it from Japan and I wouldn't recommend anyone does that. I did that really just because I can make an interesting video about it, hopefully. We'll find out if it's interesting as we go along. But I like the look of it and that's why I did this, but I wouldn't buy one of these normally if it was just for myself from Japan because the costs were extortionate for the postage and packing. Uh, the device itself over in Japan, it works out around about 40 odd pounds under $50, I'd say, equivalent of, which is, like a crazy amount of money for all the things that you get on here, but only if you're interested in getting all these things. I mean, this was peak micro hi-fi, early 2000s. People wanted to play physical media. And then things after this, when we started getting into phones that were a bit smart, and we had our iPods and goodness knows what else, people just started to pare things down to just having perhaps a, a Bluetooth speaker or a docking station for their uh, phone or iPod or whatever. So this kind of stuff disappeared shortly afterwards or over the next decade or so. So really this is peak micro system. This is like as good as it got as far as the number of features on here, not perhaps as good as it got as far as the technology goes, but as far as having the most amount of physical format playback options, I think this is up there with the best of them. So let's get in and have a look. Right, we'll just put the speakers to one side and we'll open the main component. Now, this has got a decent amount of weight to it. I'm quite glad about that. Sometimes these things feel completely hollow. As is often the case on Japanese components, they've left the promotional sticker on the front here, which tells me what formats this thing can play. That would be something that would really be used for a store display, and the idea is you're supposed to peel it off as soon as you get home. I would have done that here in the UK, but you tend to find these things on them, and sometimes it might give you the impression that something is an ex-store display or an unused device, but no, they just tend to leave those in place for some reason. But let's just have a look at those formats. Okay, so on the top we've got our auto reverse cassette deck. I don't think too much effort will have been placed into trying to make this part particularly high quality in 2003. They'd be expecting you to make your recordings onto mini disc at this point. This is really just here to play your legacy tapes. Although I do see it has an erase head in there, so no doubt you can record to cassette if you want to. We'll try that part out later on. Okay, so we've got a large display at the front. We'll light that up in a moment, but of course that's where our radio tuner is going to show. It does AM and FM. We've also got our slot loading mini disc recorder in the middle here. Cutting to the bottom, the legends tell me it's MDLP and it also uses A-Track Type S. But the bit on this that really intrigued me the most is this draw loader here for the CD player because as you can see from the logo on the front of there, as well as being able to play CDs, it can play DVDs. Yeah, this is a microsystem DVD player. In addition to that, it also mentions here, it will play MP3s. I don't think we're gonna have a USB socket on here, but no doubt it plays those from a burnt CD. Let's just have a look around the back, see what kind of connectors we've got on here. 
Okay, so top right, antenna inputs, coax for the FM, spring clip for the AM, subwoofer output, RCA stereo inputs, spring clip terminals for the speakers, digital out over optical, video out over composite, S video out, and at the bottom here, component video out. Now, I know for a fact that I don't currently have a cable that can plug into there, but I'm going to have a look online to see if I can find one. Now, there's the DVD region code, region 2. Japan used the same DVD region as the UK, so all my UK discs can play on this. That's if it plays at all. And there's the year of make, 2003. Now, moving back to the front, you can see we've got the usual Dolby Digital and DTS logos for the DVD player side of things, and also compact disc digital video. Yeah, that's VCD. So this will also play VCDs as well as DVDs. Let's just see what's behind here. Oh, nice little panel with a jog wheel. Got quite a few buttons on here, so maybe we don't need that remote after all. But yeah, let's just sum this up for the moment. Okay, I've just been online and I've ordered a D terminal to component converter for that socket on the back. Now, it's unlikely it's going to arrive before I finish making this video, fingers crossed, but unfortunately I couldn't find anywhere here in the UK that was selling one, so I've ordered it from Amazon Japan, but sometimes they're very quick, we'll find out. But just going back to this for a moment, the formats and standards that this will cover really quite amazing for such a small and now cheap unit. Let's just cover them off. I've had to write them all down. There's so many, I can't remember all these. So first off, cassette, radio, FM and AM, mini disc, including MDLP, CD, DVD, including DTS and Dolby Digital, VCD, MP3s, and it says also JPEGs on the website for this that was stored online. So. Yeah, that's a lot of formats for a little box this size. I challenge you to find an all-in-one unit that can play or support more formats and standards than this. I mean, maybe there's something out there. Originally, I was aiming to get a Sony model that was very similar to this. I don't know if it did MP3s, though, but yeah, that also did DVDs in a microsystem. So there's a few of these around, but I don't know if there's any that do anything more than that. I don't know what else they could really cover off. That's pretty much everything, in it? SACDs, that's one that they could do, although this one doesn't. It would be nice to have that included. And also, I can't see anywhere mentioned on here CD text. It might be supported by this. We'll only find out once we put a disc in and see if anything shows up on the screen. So let's get everything else unwrapped, get it set up, and see what works and what doesn't. Now, just like the older Iowa microsystem that I looked at last week, I want to use the speakers that were designed for this but of course if you were to get something along these lines you could attach whatever speakers you wanted to it i think the grills come off these yeah they do the clips for the grills do seem to stick out a little bit but it's a proper wood speaker nothing of any great quality i'd imagine six ohm i don't know what the power output on that one is but uh I think they look quite pleasant. While I've got this spun around, I might as well attach my FM antenna to it. And of course, since it's expecting 100 volts, I'm powering it through a step-down power transformer. Right, so in the other packets, I had an AM loop antenna and some speaker cable and the two remotes, his and hers. So let's stick some batteries in this as well and we'll get the thing up and running. Okay, here we go, the grand switch on there in a real world situation. Of course, you put the speakers wider apart than this. I just wanted to keep them in shot on the camera though. So let's turn the plug on and see what happens. Ah, enjoy Iowa. Now it looks like something's gone wrong there, but I think what we're looking at here is this demo mode. It does mention down here, demo slash display. So it seems to turn on in a demo mode. Right, so let's just press that to get the other mode. Ah. Right, so we can either have that or that. All right, well, we'll figure it out. Let's turn it on properly. There we go, welcome. Straight to DVD. Please wait, DVD no disc. Now, this chap did say it had swallowed the mini disc, so let's try ejecting that. Yeah, that does not want to come out. But since it's in there, let's just have a listen. Let's see what's on there. Okay, we've got a mini disc read error. Now I'm surprised at that because in the advert it was playing the mini disc. I knew it was stuck in there, but it was playing track four. It was around about 32 seconds into it. So that showed that it could read and play a disc. Now it can't even do that. That's disappointing. 
but let's move away from that for the moment. Let's see if it can play a cassette. It's still trying to read that disc up there, isn't it? Oh, and now my tape stopped. Let's see if it's chewing it up. Uh oh, this doesn't look good. Oh no. All right then, let's tighten that up a bit, give it another go. So you know I've just said how many formats this thing can play. I think it's reducing by the minute. So let's try the cassette again. Oh dear, yeah, that, that's not working, is it? Oh dear, yeah. Tape salad. Brilliant. Okay, let's see if we can get something that works. We'll put this CD in, which does have CD text on it, so we'll see if that shows up on the display. And it's taken a bit of a while to read it. I'm not confident in that laser's ability. Yeah, so the CD text is showing at the top here, and I really do like these level displays. It's a very clean and sharp look to those. Now I was concerned how long it took to read that disc, so I put it back into the tape mode and as soon as I press the DVD, which is of course the CD, I'll press start on my watch and we'll see how long it takes for that disc to get read, because that could be a sign of a, a dying laser. And I wouldn't be surprised given that everything else seems to be failing on me, but as you can see it's taking its sweet time about it. I thought it was about 30 seconds last time, but I'm keeping my eye on my watch here. We're up to 20 seconds now. That's too long, isn't it? It's definitely not right. Do you think maybe it's perhaps looking for a DVD first, then failing out and then going to a CD? If so, we'll try it with a DVD and see if that's any quicker. So it's still trying it now with 35 seconds. 37, there we go. About 37 seconds, we're getting to the CD. Not great, that, is it? Let's just take the CD out and I'm going to put a DVD in instead and we'll see how it copes with that. Seems appropriate to play a DVD from the Yellow Magic Orchestra. This is one that I imported from Japan quite some time ago. So we'll see how quick it is at reading this one. Yeah, we're at 30 seconds now. There we go, just over 30 seconds. So it's getting there in the end. Right, let's stop that and try the radio. Now, if you're wondering why it's a bit dark in here, it's because I've turned off every light in the room in the hope that that might improve the reception. LED lights often interfere with radio reception. And as you can hear, I can pick something up so the radio is working. However, I can pick very little up. It's skimming past the vast majority of the stations that this thing will normally bring in and going all the way through all the frequencies and working its way back around to radio two again. Now, normally I'd pick up quite a few things in the middle here. And whilst I could stop it and tune them in manually, it's jumping past them because it's considering they're not a strong enough signal. I suspect that the antenna socket on the back is damaged. But uh, yeah, another thing that's not right with this at all. We're not winning here today, are we? So let's take a break from the practical side of things and cover off some facts and figures instead. The system dates from 2003, at which time Iowa was a Sony sub-brand. The flashy new Iowa logo that's seen on the front of our unit was, according to Wikipedia, unveiled to the press in January 2004, which doesn't seem to quite add up. But never mind, the main takeaway from this is that this is really a Sony micro hi-fi system with an Iowa badge on the front. Now, I should also mention that there is a built-in clock which enables you to use this microsystem as an alarm clock or as a sleep timer and for activating programmed recordings. However, if you are using the four times high speed copying function from a CD to a mini disc, then you could only copy the same track once every 74 minutes. That was due to the enforced limitations of the implemented HCMS. That's the high speed copy management system. Oh, and yes, it seems the cassette deck was a bit of a poor relation, only spec to record onto type one tape and with no provision for Dolby noise reduction. Then again, the MP3 playback from CDs was also a little bit limited according to the specs. It only supported bit rates up to 128 kilobits a second but then again this was 2003. Oh and finally as you'd expect there were a few different EQs or bass enhancement options as well as faux surround modes. 
OK, that's enough of that. Let's go back to the device itself, hook a screen up and see if the video output is working. Right, well, fortunately, and booking the trends so far, the DVD player appears to be working just fine. I've been testing it out with this THX demo disc, which has been made to highlight the sound effects and music in various movies, and as a result, I've been able to get a good impression as to how this would cope while playing a film, and it does a really very good job. I've had the volume pretty much at the maximum, so it doesn't go particularly loud, but even at this maximum level, there's no distortion whatsoever. There's a good, rich bass, a nice, well-rounded sound. It also appears to be able to place the sound very accurately. So it almost feels like a surround system, even though we've just got these two speakers at the front and they're very close together. But it really does sound very nice indeed. <laughs> Now, one other thing I've noticed, this display here will show the chapter names if they're present on the disc. Now, that's something I've never seen on any of my other devices, whether it's DVD, Blu-ray, UHD Blu-ray, presumably because I've just got the clock display on the front, whereas here we've got extra space. So if I just select something on the screen at the top here, we'll just pick that. Once it gets into that chapter, you'll see the chapter information will come across the top there. Only a little thing, but I was just impressed to see that because I didn't realise that my DVDs had chapter information that could show on a display. OK, this video is turning into a bit of a farce. I've accidentally disabled the video output. I think we saw enough of that anyway, so it's not such a big deal. But I'll just explain, it's a terrible bit of user interface. I found the option to change the language into English, and I started working my way down through the settings for the DVD part of this thinking that I'll just get everything right for when my component lead arrives from Japan. And I worked my way down the first screen, got the one for the component output, and I could have 480 interlaced or 480 progressive. I thought, well, might as well go for progressive. So I turned it into progressive. Little did I know that doing that would turn off the composite and the S-video output. So now the only video output is over component, and I don't have the component lead. So I thought, well, there must be some way to reset this. Went through the instructions. No, there's ways to reset other things to do with the radio and the time and the presets and all that. And you can change between 480i and 480p over component by pressing this button on the front. But there's no way to reset the video settings until you go into the component video output, which is the one I can't see because I haven't got the lead, and then go through and change it back to whatever you wanted to. So yeah, I've effectively disabled the video output until I get my component lead from Japan. So I think what we should do instead, uh, have a look inside, see if I can get any of the other things working. We've got the cassette deck, which is goosed, and the mini disc, which isn't working. Okay, I think this might be the last screw I have to remove to get the cover off. How easy do you think they've made this thing to repair? I'd suggest that that wasn't near the top of their lists when they were designing this, but we'll find out. But the trouble with these microsystems is that everything is just buried inside. Oh, well, that side is not great for a start off. Yeah, not going to find anything in there. Hopefully we can access it all through the other side. Yeah, I'm wondering if I was to take the front off, if that's going to help, because we've got a screw at the top here one at the bottom, that's the same on the other side. So then the whole front of this would come off and that might enable me to get to the mini disc mechanism here. So I think we should do that. Now, no doubt these knobs will pull off on the front here. So let's just try. Oh yeah, there we go. Right, we got those off. Yeah, so far this is showing the potential for repair, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to repair it, but at least I can access more of it than I thought I'd be able to. I think maybe we unclip the top and then it comes down over the rest of it. I don't want to snap anything off. Oh, hold on, that's come off. Well, that makes replacing the belts in there very easy because the whole top section just comes out. Ah, there we go. Okay, it looks a bit like a car crash, but I think we're doing all right so far. Right, well, let's just pop a tape in here and see if we can figure out why it's not working, so. Yeah, we've got a loose belt. It's this one here. See that? Flapping around. This one's all right, this flat belt, that's fine. I won't bother trying to swap that because it's doing its job. So I've got to take this one off first to get to that. 
and now we need to just get the other one out from behind. Oh, it just, it snapped as soon as I touched it. That belt is ready to go. Wow. I'm not going to snap it again, but it will do if I just put any kind of pressure on it because I want to be able to use it as a template to try and find a suitable size for my assorted bag. But yeah, that belt has completely perished. It's uh, just on the verge of turning to gunk, but it hasn't done it yet. Well, I've got a couple of options there. Okay, let's try this one. That one seems okay. You don't want it too tight because it starts causing unnecessary pressure on either end and you'll need extra torque to get it to move. That one seems all right. So we need to put this one back on again now. I think we've actually fixed our cassette deck. I'm shocked at that, but I'm not going to put it back in just yet because we need to get access to this mini disc player and I think it's easier leaving this off for the moment. Very happy with that. Right, put it out of the way before I break it and uh, we'll have a look at the rest of it. Let's just go back to that belt though because I don't need it anymore. So this is the one that's come off it. And just look, it's like pulling licorice apart or something. Just shows you this is a belt on a device that's 20 years old and this is what happens to it. Just want to show you a couple of things on this board. First off, it's a Sony board, Micon PWB, but over here on the right it says Flash ROM. <laughs> Do you think it should say Flash ROM? Anyway, let's try and get to this deck. It looks like my plan of attack is to go down from the top here and take out the screws on the metal cowling. Hopefully that then lifts up. It really is quite nicely constructed this. It's very modular and everything plugs together rather than being soldered together. There is some quality to it. Okay so those are all the screws that were holding that part in. And that's not really getting me any closer. We need to take this whole thing out I think. So we need to take both of these out. It's this one that's quite a tight one, this little green one here. So again, take that out of there. We're probably best unplugging everything, I think. Are we loose? Yes. So I think we need to take the two screws out of this one so that we can fold this back and get to the mini disc. Right, so yeah, that's now loose. Yeah, I need this mini disc out of here, but I don't want to break anything. Oh, there we go. I think we've got it. Just had to push the right part. Yep. 1999 to 2002. Okay. That'll be a compilation album, won't it? Right, let's see if we can get this open now and get access to the belt without taking this out anymore. Okay, now we've got to take that spring off there and I think it should be clipped under a bit of plastic at the bottom here. There we go. Now we could get better access in here. It's just that little belt at the front there. You might have seen me replace one of these before. It's just the belt that's going between those two white sections there. Only a tiny little thing. That's what we need to swap out. So let's just get that out of there. Right, so here's our replacement. And of course it looks a bit smaller than the original. That one no doubt has stretched, which is the problem. Right, let me try and get this in here. These things are always made more awkward when you're filming them because I'm trying to give you an angle, but I'm also trying to see it myself. Right, so the belt is on. It's just a matter of putting this all back together again now. So we'll clip this down first of all. We'll put the spring back on. All right, that's done. I really appreciate all the labeling in here because next to each socket it tells you what they're for. So that one says to tuner. This one here says to front, that goes to deck. Okay, so I've just put the ribbon cables in that connect the front up and it turns out, of course, I didn't need to remove these from here because this part doesn't come out. Now, rather annoyingly, somewhere along the lines, I've lost the backing for this. You can see the pins here are all exposed. They're supposed to have a piece of blue tape on the back of them. It must have just fallen off. I pulled the whole cable out to show you. That's what should be on the end and it's just gone missing. I can't find it anywhere. So I'm trying to construct 
a replacement because these pins on their own aren't sufficient they're just going to bend it's very thin so they need this piece of plastic behind them to give them something to hold against so i've cut a bit of plastic out of some packing material and i'm just going to glue that on the back of these before i put them on i hope this isn't going to be the part that stops the cassette deck from working because it'd be ridiculous after all that good fortune in replacing the belts easily if a little cable stops me succeeding unbelievably i've managed to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory here as far as the cassette goes i think the pins got swapped over in the cable i'm gonna to have to blame myself for that because i'm the only person here so yeah my fault but when i plugged it all in and pressed play nasty pop sound cassette deck dead i've learned a lesson with those ribbon cables so next time that wouldn't happen but yeah unfortunately i think i've killed the cassette deck but don't worry because because that's not the end of it no that, that's probably the best news i've got here um let me show you what's going on around the front of this okay we're looking at the front of the mini disc and as you can see there it's tried to eject itself and it's been doing this all the time it's been switched on now i did notice it exhibiting this same behavior when i switched it on for the first time but back then, I assumed that it was down to the fact that it had a disc stuck in it and the belt was loose, so it couldn't eject it. So it was just going through this process of trying to eject it over and over. But now we've got the belt in there, we've got the disc out, and it's still trying to eject a disc over and over. So I suspect that what's happened here is that when that disc got stuck in there, somebody tried to get it out through the front. They were probably sticking a knife in, trying to jimmy the disc out. As a result, they've broken the mechanism so now it thinks there's a disc in there when there isn't one and it's constantly trying to eject it and if i try to put a new disc in it won't accept it because it thinks there's one already there so yeah the mini disc drive is broken as well but that's not all no we've got something else to show you yeah let's just eject the dvd that's as far as it goes it's got stuck i don't know what that's about Perhaps me turning it upside down has dislodged something in there because I never made it down as far as this part of the unit. I was just messing around with the top here. The furthest I got down were the screws for the mini disc. Never even got below this separating panel. And yet now the DVD is broken as well. I mean, it was always reading discs a little bit too slowly, but now it's completely knackered. At this point, the best I can do with this is to break it for parts. There are various ribbon cables in here that I could perhaps reuse in the future if I encounter the same problem that I had with this one, where the end fell off. And by the way, I found the end for that here. It was stuck to my elbow. But yeah, the rest of it, well, I've got a couple of belts that I've put in here that I could do with getting out because um, they're not free. And there's some other bits, maybe screws and things I could use. But other than that, it's, it's no use now. Although it has been useful to tell a bit of a story, so I think we should perhaps wrap that up. Do you remember back to when we started and I was wondering if you could name a device that could play more music formats than this? Well, I think you could name pretty much any device now because this one is Goosed. Now, a tiny bit of that is down to me, the cassette player. I was impressed with how easy it was to get to the belts in there, so that was a big positive. But yeah, the end coming off that ribbon cable, me putting it back on wrong, I presume, that's what's caused the pop, which now means the cassette part doesn't work. So yeah, that's entirely on my shoulders, hands up on that one. But the rest of it, yeah, it was knackered when it got here, the, the mini disc and that slow reading DVD, which is now not reading anything at all. The radio not being particularly receptive, although I had ordered and today have arrived some more connectors for the back. I was going to see if I could get a better uh, reception with those. It did mention the instructions that you might want to turn off the DVD as well if you want to get a better reception. So they seem to be aware that maybe the radio reception wasn't that great in this thing. But uh, that's neither here nor there now because the whole thing is just knackered. But remember, this is not about this particular unit, this video. This is about a micro system of the early 2000s it's the middle of a three-part series the first one was about one from 1979 this is from an early 2000s and the next one's going to be about a new one and why might you want a new one well i think you might have already spotted some reasons the problem with these things is yeah it's only 20 years old doesn't sound very much 2003 but just bear in mind the belt in the mini disc slot loader had gone and the belt in the tape 
drive for the cassette player had gone. Now, that means that if you were to buy any micro system now from around the same time as this, it's more than likely those things will have gone or they're just about to go. So you've got to be dealing with the situation that I've got here that you have to open it up and you have to swap those components out. Now in here, it didn't seem too difficult and yet I encountered some other problems. Some of those of my own making, some I think of the persons before. This had been well cared for as well, other than perhaps messing with the mini disc, but up to that point, no scratches on it, no marks on the speakers, clearly being looked after, and yet it's failed just down to age. So that's something you'd need to bear in mind. These early 2000s ones, you're probably going to have to replace some belts if they use belts in them at all. Now, don't write off all microsystems. I still love microsystems for the functionality they give you. I have a nice little Sony unit over on this shelf here that you can't see that is working just fine, and that is a, a um, CD and a mini disc. It doesn't have a cassette on it, but uh, it works perfectly. It copies CDs to mini discs, all the rest of it. it sounds really nice as well. So yeah, um, I'm glad I got that one. Not too glad I got this, but it's a good demonstration of what can go wrong. So in that regard, it's, it's served its purpose. I bought it to show in a video about early micro, early 2000s microsystems. I've done that and I've shown you what can go wrong with them. So now that you know, it might be worth thinking, well, hold on, maybe I don't want an early 2000s one. If I don't need a cassette player, I don't need a mini disc. Maybe I just need a CD player. What's around nowadays? What are the new ones like? Are they any good? Do they offer any additional functionality that's come along since here, like Bluetooth and streaming and internet radio and all that kind of stuff? Well, let's have a look at another one in a week or so. A new one from Denon. It has been on the market for a couple of years. I've looked now. I thought it was brand new, but no, it's a couple of years old. But still, it's the latest model, I think, from them. So we'll have a look at that one. Brand new. Surely that one can't go wrong. Well, we'll find out. Uh, but that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.